After walking through our marriage crisis in 2011, we knew that we didn't want to go back to the marriage that we had before. We had to create a new marriage. And so many of you that have had trauma in your marriage, you are on this path to trying to find out how can we create a new marriage. But even those of you that don't have trauma, you're always looking for what is it that we can do to have a new and better marriage. And so today, we're going to tell you five areas that you can change and that you can adjust to make a new marriage. Stay tuned. Hello, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. This is Rusty and Heather Bryan. Has Nate still not called you? Me and Maybe we talk all the time. I doubt it. I cannot <laughs> believe he hasn't called you. You did that so great. I know. They probably, what what Nate Bargatze is who we're talking about. And on Nate Land, that's how they open up. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's just kind of my, um, my shout out to him mm-hmm. because I just mm-hmm. like him. And I'm surprised <laughs> they haven't called and asked us just to voice over. That's right. Hello, folks. That's right. Just... Mm-hmm. Instead of, for, instead of him. Instead of him. But, and we don't say, hey, bear. And they say, hello, folks, and hey, bear. Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's. Because then that would be a complete ripoff. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not, compl- we're just, we're just, we're just half, half ripping. Half ripping off. <laughs> hey, but that's the greatest form of flattery. That's right. You know? And we're sending people his way. Because yeah. you know people listen to us and are like, who's this Nate Borgatsky guy? Yeah, you don't even know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> It sounded like you choked when you were saying this. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, you know, I was just listening. I mean, as I'm listening to us, I'm like, I don't sound as loud. I wonder if I should turn up the volume. I have a beanie on. Yeah, you do. <laughs> it's blocking. It is. It's blocking. It the, is part of your attire in the yeah. winter. And well, I was freezing. listening to, yeah, it is cold today. I was listening and thinking, God, it's kind of echoey. Like yep, it's because it we is. don't have carpet around yeah. us. Yeah, you know, Logan and my youngest son and I have started uh, another podcast. Um, another topic for another day. That's right. Maybe, maybe uh, we could have him on. Uh, maybe um, <laughs> it has nothing to do with marriage. The, he is the reason why you said, why you pointed to me and let me say my own name. <laughs> Probably, but I, um, yeah, we came down here because we had to move everything out of our podcast studio. Because they are in the midst of recreating our podcast and video uh, studio, I guess you could say. And it's it's going to be, be yeah, coaching. That's where we'll do it. It's going to be great. But we had to move everything downstairs for a little while and we have no carpet. So, yeah, could be a little echoey, but I don't think so. We have really good mics and things. Okay. So anyway. All right. Well, hey, that's uh, that's enough of that. Um, All right. So today we uh, we kind of had this idea because some of you are reading along with us in the book by Josh and Katie Walters. It's called New Marriage, Same Couple. And the whole book, they have a they have a similar story of journeying through infidelity, but they, uh, the whole book is just about, you know, you're the same couple, but sometimes you need to create a new marriage. And for them, it hit after infidelity. Uh, there's a great story in there where um, she had found like a bunch of old love notes and they had like pet names and things like that in there. And she brought them out when they were moving and she said, do you still feel this way about me? Because I don't know that I f- still feel this way about you. And he said, I'm not asking you to feel that way. I'm asking you to go on a new journey and create a new marriage. And, you know, I think that we have certainly landed there. We have created a really a brand new marriage. And... Um, I think a lot of what we learned through, uh, through our journey through infidelity can help other people as they are just trying to maybe not in the same, you know, extreme like we did. Maybe they don't, that doesn't need to happen. But I do think that so many times when things happen in marriage or when people are stuck in a rut, they keep saying, I want to go back to the way we were. And it's not really going back to the way we were because that wasn't working. 
Mm-hmm. It's uh, what can we do to just create something completely new and live now the marriage we always dreamed about because it wasn't that before. Yeah. And I get why people say, oh, let's go back to how we were before because you want to go back before that hurt happened. Mm -hmm. And that's where that's coming from. But to your point, how things were before weren't working. And so, you know, if you could create a new you or a new marriage without having to walk through the hurt, awesome. But for, for a lot of us, that hurt is what spurred on the change. It's what made us reflect inside and go, hmm, Mm -hmm. something's got to change. Well, there's definitely some elements about going back to doing some things that you did, you know, when you were dating Mm -hmm. and, you know, newlyweds and trying to recreate some of that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And I mean, there's a lot, there's, there's not, I mean, there's some things and some pieces of that, that, that I'm still to this day, like, oh, you know, that was fun. I wish we could. And, and you have to remind yourself, well, in order to kind of get those feelings back, you have to do the things that you used to do to get those feelings. But the difference I think is in all of these areas that we're going to talk about, there's just this real, there's just depth. There's depth and richness and maturity that's so much different than even going back to the honeymoon stage. That's right. That's right. And, you know, you've lived through so much life and so many scars and wounds and, you know, to have to have gone through and lived through that, it just makes your marriage so much yeah. um, richer, dip, yeah. deeper, different. You know, I think about us on our on our wedding day. If somebody had um, played a film strip of what all we were going to go through in our marriage so far, you probably to run. We, we probably both mm. would have run. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that that's a blessing that God doesn't reveal, mm. you know, everything to you. Um, it's part of trusting him in the process. But I don't know that there's many people out there that would, once their reel was played, mm. be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, let I, me us, sign up yeah, for that. <laughs> let's do that. Yeah. But, but, hey, when we're standing at the altar, that's what we feel like it's going to be. Mm. We feel like it's going to be, you know, these years of bliss and happiness and joy and there is but there's hard stuff Mm -hmm. that you go through and you know we've talked before on our podcast about how so many people give up so easily and that we live in a um disposable Mm -hmm. time you know like uh trade this one in and get something new Mm -hmm. and if people give up on their marriage like that um I think it's real easy to tr- to want to give up on your marriage like that because of the hardness of some mm. seasons. But gosh, it's worth just sticking out and and working through it. So sorry, I went off on a little trail. No, let's that's talk okay. Because we don't even. I mean, even if we don't get to all five of them, it's okay. We. I don't know if you know this, but we are in complete control of our podcast. <laughs> are we now? <laughs> but I yes. know you and your plan. And if we okay. don't get I don't, there. <laughs> I'm learning a lot from you. That's how our marriage is also okay. new. Okay. Um, no, I love what you said, though, because that's, I mean, part of why we do what we do is because we lived through a season that most people would completely give up and throw away. That's right. And for us to have gone through that and knowing that if we had not journeyed through it in the way that we did, we wouldn't ex- be experiencing what we have today. That's right. And so as we look at other people, I think that, I mean, ours is so extreme. And so people look at can that are in the extreme, which there's plenty of those. I mean, we've mm-hmm. been praying for couples all during February, and the large majority mm-hmm. of those people that have signed up and reached out for our February prayer challenge have really hard stuff that they're going through. And yeah. most of them, are it is infidelity because they're attracted to our story and they're like crying out for somebody that understands to pray yeah. for them. And so, you know, but even those people that are listening and there's plenty of them too that, that have, haven't experienced that, they're looking and they're going, you know, I got problems too. We all got problems. 
But my goodness, if those people can make it through what they made it through, then there is no reason to give up or to even, you know, just be apathetic about mm-hmm. my marriage, but let's go for it. Let's make it brand new. Mm-hmm. And and there's a lot of people that say, well, I haven't given up. Like, I'm not asking for a divorce, but you're very much in a season of just, you know, roommates. Yeah, you're just uh, settling. Just um, coexisting. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, we know from so many experiences that if you don't, you know, there's a lot of, oh, well, I'll just wait until we're in the next season mm-hmm. of marriage. Like mm-hmm. this season's too hard That's to right. work on our marriage, but the further and further you grow apart, the mm-hmm. easier it becomes to give up at some That's point. Right. And the harder it is to regain that that connection that you once had. Well, we've even had people that have reached out and said, you know, we stuck it out for our kids and, mm-hmm. you know, kind of hoping it was going to be better and then kids all grew up and left and it didn't get any better, but you know, it's just easier to stay together and it'd be too expensive to, Mm -hmm. and I'm going, what a miserable existence. Yeah. And it's just not supposed to be that way. And part of that is because. it can be different. Yeah, it can be different. And, and, and where we found the differences, we've, we've come up with five areas and one of them is exactly where we're heading into right now talking about is just this being um, a team together. Mm -hmm. And what what I want us to do, and we may not make it through all five of them, but I think we probably will. We'll see. But what I want us to do is I want us to both kind of reflect back on what our marriage was like in this area for the first half because we're we're getting really close to – the halfway right. point of when mm-hmm. you know when when you uh, confessed um, to to being unfaithful, and now that was fifteen years into our marriage, and right now we're well, we're about to hit what thirteen? Mm-hmm. It'll be another thirteen this mm-hmm. summer. So in one more year after that, it'll be halfway. I'm my math isn't math. Um, no, <laughs> no, it's certainly not. <laughs> it is not. It's not mathing at all. No, when we and then get, I was to, like, "Will it ever catch up?" Uh, oh Lord, oh boy, she's a librarian now, people. It's okay; she does not teach your second graders math anymore. Um, no, we need to hit that thirty-year mark, and that's going to be. In, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's going to be in 2026. Got you, babe. So we got a little bit of time. Yep, I'll be here for it. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> um, but all right, so let's think about. We, we were kind of teeing it up for teamwork yeah. and just saying how so many people are just coexisting. Mm-hmm. They're just roommates. It's just not, there's no unity. There's no, we're in this thing together. We're a team. So think back to our first 15 years and what was it like compared to what it is now and how we shifted that to become the new marriage that yeah. we are today. Well, there's so mi- so much deep um, conversation that we could have about this, and I know we're just trying to hit the highlight. So for me, I think my problem was we were not a team because I was exceedingly selfish. Mm. Um, I very, very much dwelt on what was best for me and what made me look good and what I wanted. And, um, of course, when I was going through that time, I didn't see it like that. But looking back, it was like, "Mm, yeah, that was all about me. And that had to shift to um, afterwards it being about us and it being about us working together in no matter what area it it was in, in parenting, in, you know, relationship, whatever it, we had to become one instead of me being completely focused on myself myself. Okay, can I just say that's so good because um, it would be really hard if I just have to say the neg- have to say negative things about sure. you. Mm-hmm. So I just without- say them about myself. Yeah. So I appreciate, <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate All that. Right, number two. <laughs> number two. What was negative about you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I think this is something though that I really appreciate. We were doing some marriage coaching the other night um, with a couple, and uh, they were just referring to some other marriage ministries and, you know, a couple that had gone through something similar. And they just made the comment of how they didn't connect with them quite the same because they felt like 
the person that had done the betraying didn't really seem, uh, what was the word they used? Mm. Uh, Humble? Yeah, Mm. maybe. Or remorseful. 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 I think that was the Mm -hmm. word they used. And um, not, I don't know. They even might have even said there was maybe even a little cockiness about it. And kind of glorifying the sin. Yeah, and and I don't think that, but I can see how they can how they can see that in people, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they just were saying how much they appreciated that you, you know, always really own up to it. You're not, you know, it's it's just you can you can understand people's pain and feel it, and you you do a really good job of just hey, you know, I admit it. This was this was me. And so even when I was thinking about the whole teamwork thing, we haven't talked about this. Like, we don't know what each other are going to say, but I thought the same thing. I just thought, you know, we weren't a team because there was, and look, I got, I had, I had plenty of my own, um, responsibility in Mm -hmm. things that, that did not make us a, a good marriage. But, you know, as far as teamwork goes, I mean, I kind of thought that too. I was like, Man, it was, you know, you just, you wanted to be the best mom you Mm -hmm. wanted to. And it wasn't because you didn't want to necessarily be that for them. I mean, it was, but a lot of it was, look at me, Mm -hmm. look at me. And I even think that even on a level of our marriage, it was Mm -hmm. sort of like, I want to be the best wife because Mm -hmm. I want all, I want other husbands or other guys to look and go, man, you know, wish my wife was like that, that kind of thing. Right. And and I think that it did. It did make us where we weren't really a team. Um, even on my side of things, you know, there was, because we weren't really working together as a team, you know, like with parenting, I wanted, I mean, I wanted our kids to like me more than they liked you. You know, I wanted to be the cool dad. And, you know, until that happened and we just were like, all right, you know, it's me and you, and we're in this thing together. We've got each other's backs on everything. And, I mean, I even think that some of that came down to just the attacks that both of us were getting, but particularly you, you know, from outsiders and people, and for us to make the decision, we're staying together, we're going to be a team. And, I mean, you know, as hard as it was, I became your biggest defender and your biggest fan, even through the worst of the worst. And so, um, and that's just carried on. And it's carried on to where we both, because we journeyed through that, I think we both can look at each other and just just always say, man, we, you know, we're, we are 100% here for each other on anything and everything. And, you know, one thing that you need to be doing as you listen to this is checking yourself. Like when you're listening to this, are you thinking, oh, she's crazy. I'm not like that at all. (laughs) Or or she was crazy. Or are you thinking, gosh, I have a little tendency to do that. Or can you be honest with yourself in listening and and deciding if maybe there's some selfishness or some um, trying to um, get attention and wanting people to think you're the best um, at marriage or mothering or fathering or whoever it is um, that's listening. Just, you know, really dive in and ask God to reveal to you if that's something you're walking through. And this is such a silly example, but um, the other day we were going, um, we went in two separate cars to one of Logan's games and because we were coming from two different places and, and, after the game, like Logan rode with me there. And then after the game, he said, I'm a ride with dad. And, you know, there was a quick check, not a check, a quick spark of the old me that I was like, why does he want to ride with his dad? Why didn't you want to ride with me? And I was like, that is so dumb. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I, but it, it still was there. But that thought, that thought's not the sin. Mm. The thought is, okay, now what am I going to do with it? Mm-hmm. And immediately I had to flip to, God, thank you that he loves his dad. Thank you that Rusty's here, that we're both at every game, that he wants to go back and talk with him on the way home from the game. And I mean, there was just, I had to shift to thankfulness. And if you don't make that shift, if you aren't able to 
wrap those feelings up, then it's probably something you need to look at a little deeper. Mm, That's good. And, you know, I was thinking about just the couple out there that, you know, these five areas that we're going to talk about. And by the way, we're not going to talk about all five of them today. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No, I think it's great. I mean, we get to talking about stuff that we're really passionate about and it's okay. And I think people understand that. Um, But I think that there's people out there listening and they may listen to these five areas and they may go, you know, I'm doing pretty good in that. And, you know, I don't think really we need to, Mm -hmm. we need to change, but, you know, in order to have a marriage that's really thriving, I think a big part of it is identifying the areas where you need some adjusting. Mm -hmm. And so that may be your homework is just like thinking through hey, what are the areas that we're just not clicking on all cylinders? We just need some adjusting, and maybe just that area needs to become new. And, and you know, I hope as you're listening to this, I hope four out of the five are great. I hope five out of the five mm-hmm. are great. But, you mm-hmm. know, for us, when we went through what we went through, we... We were over. Yeah, we were over <laughs> five. And... Hello, we were probably over 10, but we're just identifying five of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I don't want people to to think, oh, you know, yeah, it's just a lot of it has to do with your circumstances. And yeah. so, um, so yeah, just, and, and even speaking on teamwork, we were just identifying just then some really things that aren't real tangible, like mm-hmm. that aren't, you know, it's kind of hard to, to gauge and, and to put, put your finger on exactly, but like even the teamwork type things of, hey, we're a team when it comes to stuff around the house. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the the real obvious things. But there's a lot of you out there that really struggle in that area. And there's bitterness. Mm-hmm. There's so right. much bitterness between couples that are like, well, you don't help and you don't pull your, pull your weight mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. And that's why I think that this next one, and we'll talk about this and then we can, okay. then we can <laughs> wrap her up for the day, but it's communication. And it's over communication. I, you know, we talk so much on here about communication, probably not even enough, even though we talk about it a lot, because I, I would venture to say that almost every couple that we coach or talk to, they will tell you that their number one problem is communication in some way. And so for us, when you look back, in the first half, those first 15 years, what was different and what have we done to today to make, uh, to make our marriage new in this area? Well, I think that for us and a lot of the couples that we talk to, you know, some, sometimes we hear we don't know how to communicate, but then other times we hear like they don't want to communicate with me. And I think that that was our problem. I think that I was n- such a terrible communicator and made you afraid to communicate with me because I would always shut it down or shift the blame to you. Like I never could accept responsibility for the things that were a problem in our marriage. And like, I can, I can look back and remember specific conversations where I know looking back that you had to work up an extreme amount of courage and you were trying to word things so perfectly. So I wouldn't explode and get defensive, but I still managed to make it your fault. Like how dare you blame me for this? Or how dare you say that I have something wrong when it's obviously you is what I can look back and see the old Heather saying. And and it's heartbreaking. And so it's not just, oh, we need to communicate better. It was, I didn't want to communicate with you. I didn't, because every time I felt like I was, you were pointing out things that I knew I was struggling in, but I just wouldn't admit it. I wouldn't um, say, yes, I'm struggling in that, or yes, I see how that hurt you. It was always like, are you kidding me? Like, how is that my fault? And so our communication was exceedingly one-sided because I had no problem telling you all the things that bothered me and bugged me and were wrong. Um, But then you weren't able to then come to me and have those same type of conversations because I always shifted it back on you. Um, 
Man, I'm really having a hard time following up because I this like if you if you people want real life example of a new marriage, I mean the first two things that you've talked about, it's I just wish that you guys could see that Heather's heart. And I don't know that we've really I mean, we have said all of these things. I've heard you say all these things when you've coached with people, but I don't know if we've ever really just, you've sat down and been like, hey, this is what was wrong for the first 15 years. And like, I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't expecting you to say the things that you're saying. I was in a way, but not just so directly where you were just like, yeah, this was me and now I'm not that. And well, and sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, and we hadn't even gotten to the one that I'm most passionate about. <laughs> well, the reason why, though, that changed everything. Absolutely. And that's why your heart is different in the mm-hmm. other areas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we'll get to that next week. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, were, were you finished? Yeah. No, you, interrupt, I, you interrupted. Sorry, you interrupted. <laughs> you interrupted me. Uh, giving me a compliment. Giving you that's praises. I'm not really I good know. at accepting I know. that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't. Like, I don't even know how to really put into words that we're, we, in the things that we're saying to y'all, I wish that you knew both of us 15 years ago. And some of you do, Mm -hmm. because what you would hear, the words that are really coming out of Heather's mouth and she's describing, you would go, that's not the same person. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that's why our marriage is not the same. Now, when it comes to communication, I got plenty of, plenty of, there's plenty of blame on me to go around too. And a lot of it is because I was a terrible leader in this area. And, and I think it was because, I mean, I was just cowering Mm -hmm. down to the things that you just described. Mm -hmm. And I was so much more concerned with keeping the peace. And how many of you people that are listening right now, can raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. So much more concerned about keeping the peace than actually accomplishing something through communication. And sometimes it takes, here's the thing, these, those of you that have come to us with, for, because you, you know, you need help. You Mm -hmm. need some marriage coaching, you need mentors, whatever it is. For those of you that are journeying that path with us and going through that, it, it speaks volumes because I do know, I don't know that I could have fixed the situation myself. Mm -hmm. Even if I had gone, I'm going to be a man and I'm going to try to lead better in this way. I don't know that it would have, that would have happened that way. But if I had been man enough to go, Hey, we need a little help. That's right. You know, let's find a godly couple Mm -hmm. or somebody that can help us and journey with us. And they could help to point out these things and give us tools that would have helped the situation. Mm -hmm. And if we had had that 15 years ago, who knows? Maybe we would have never gotten in the situation we were. That's right. Because if you had tried to do that, I probably just would have barked louder. Yeah. But if you bringing somebody in alongside us, you hear things differently Mm -hmm. from, from people who aren't your spouse (laughs) Yeah, and, you know, from a friend or from a mentor or from a counselor, um, you know, you just hear things differently and they land differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I just want to say, I mean, like just hearing you say those words, I mean, I probably could have said the same thing. It wouldn't have meant near as much. And, and I don't know that, I mean, I, yeah, I probably would have said exactly what mm-hmm. you said. Um, but for the listeners to hear you say that without any prompting, and I'm telling you, we haven't talked about this at all. Um, we just said, hey, let's do, let's do kind of what's, what's a new marriage. Mm-hmm. Here are the mm-hmm. five areas. And let's go through and talk about what changed mm-hmm. from ha- for, at the halfway point. And so, yeah, I mean, I know we we ended up expanding on these way longer than we thought, but we did say surprise, that. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> but you actually did say, uh-huh. the thing I'm most worried about mm-hmm. is I don't think we're going to be able to get all five of them yeah. in. Well, and the crazy thing is we could probably do one, one episode on each one. on each one, but we don't, I mean, yeah. nobody has time for that. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody got time for nope. that. <laughs> Well, we could do longer episodes, and some of you would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, last thing. This is really kind of funny. Nate Bargatze and his crew, they do a two-hour 
podcast. Mm -hmm. And three weeks ago, actually, it was two full episodes ago, I guess. I don't remember. But they came out and they said, hey, we just, you know, we're all kind of busy now. We just want to let you know. We're going to back this down. We're going to do one hour. And people complain. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they had to they had to go back to two hours. No. They did two episodes. That's hilarious. And they got so much emails That's and people. Hilarious. So they went back to two. So I guess, you know, if you're listening and you're like, oh, I gotta go longer. I mean, you can try to twist our arm and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Um, but hey, let's shut it down right there because I think that there, that's plenty to digest on teamwork and communication. And we'll come back next week and we'll hit at least one more, maybe two, maybe three. Maybe, maybe three. Maybe three. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening, and we'll see you next time.